Hey y'all, this is Rhonda with Rhonda Thomason Acrylics and Clocks. This is my YouTube channel. And I'm new. This is my sixth video, I think. I do have a um, Facebook group. It's Acrylic Paintings and Other Forms of Art Sellers Group. And I'll put the link to that down below. Um, what I'm doing today is these clocks that I love to make. Um, I've made quite a few of them. Actually, what they are is clock kits. And I'm hoping to get my code because I am becoming an affiliate with this company. And you'll be able to get 5% off. Um, I'm waiting on an email right now. And hopefully by the time I upload this video... I'll be able to put that in the description. So, I'm going to show you the kit first. First of all, I want to show you, it has these little slots in it right here where these ticks go. And today, I'm putting a, a, a gray base with blue paints, and I thought the silver ones would go really good. This is what comes with a kit. And they go in like this. I don't add these until the painting is dry and I do the resin. Uh, they come in silver, black, white, gold, and rose gold. And here's the hands, silver hands. I haven't done a rose gold one yet, but I want, I want to show y'all this. Look at that. And then the cap on the clock mechanism matches the hands and the ticks. But I'm thinking that the PBO iridescent copper is going to go really good in the painting that I do with this kit here. And after the painting dries, before I do the resin, this is the bottom of it. And what you'll do is use wood glue or resin and you put them together like this and you clamp them or find some way because I found that clamps leaves a mark on your painting. That's another video though. I'll show y'all how I do that. And then your clock mechanism goes here. Well, I hadn't unscrewed the stuff yet. Anyway, it goes in this hole like that. And I've taped the bottom, because this is the part that's going to show here. This part here is not going to show. So, I don't tape it. I'm going to show y'all what I've done with this contact paper. I'm getting a head start. That's the reason I'm peeling these back like this. But I'll show y'all what these are for. These holes right here can present a problem when you're blowing out your design. When the paint hits these, it stops dead in its tracks. And it can be a problem if you don't learn how to work around it. Now, I've never tried this before, so I put the contact paper under the hose, and what I'm hoping is that the hose will fill up with the gray foundation or base paint, and then it'll be like one level surface for my design to blow over, and we're going to see how that works. <laughs> Cross your fingers. Also, what I like to do before I do my paint is a consistency test. You want to make sure your paints are all the same consistency. And I'm going to get started. It might have helped if I made sure my blow dryer was nearby. There it is. Okay. Alrighty, as I said, we're using the gray base, 
and I'm hoping this works. I'm going to fill the hose up. I'm learning how to edit videos. I got a, a Mavavi app where you can fast forward and do talkovers, add text. And this is my trusted cake spatula. I love this thing here. I've made uh, quite a few of these clocks. I've only made two of the blue ones and um, I've already sold them so I hope this one turns out as pretty. I want to say hey to my friends and my group. Hey, y'all. Thank you for your support. Also, if you're going to subscribe to my channel, I, uh, I have another channel that I started a long time ago that I don't use anymore. But it was with a different phone, a different email, a different password. And I'm having trouble getting it deleted. So, if you're going to subscribe, please subscribe to this one. Rhonda Thomason Acrylics and Clocks. Okay? Alrighty. And you want to go and make sure your sides are taken care of. And I want to save a little bit of my paint so I can do the, uh, the part the piece that I'm, I've got to glue to this one because this paint here is custom and when you do a custom paint it's kind of hard to get the same shade if you're going to make more All right and yes I am having problems allergy problems. And if you're going to support me, please just be patient. Um, I get nervous and I talk too much. I ain't learned how to do music yet. I've got to find a music app to download. And then... You want to pop your bubbles. This might be a pain torch. You don't want to hold it in one spot. Okay. There we go. I have a... Um, filter system that I use because I do a lot of resin. I do resin all my pieces. And um, I have a light lighting system. I'll show that to y'all at another time. Okay, now I haven't decided on my composition that I'm wanting to do yet. <coughs> and covering the uh, hose up, I believe that worked. I believe it worked, y'all. Oh, I got to do a shout out to Canela Sirocco. That's my girl. That's how I learned how to do the Dutch pour. And that's where I found these clocks. I forgot to tell y'all, before I added the paint, I did do two coats of gesso on this board. And I use a roller to do it. I use the Liquitex Acrylic Mediums Gesso. They have white and clear. I prefer the white. And then you just do a light sanding before you paint. 
And we're going to add our colors. I'll tell you the colors as I go, and I'll put them in the description, too. Uh, I see more bubbles. Okie dokie. I like to always have a dark color of whatever color I'm working with. Today it's blues. I like to use a dark blue. This is the Atelier Blue Black Indigo. And I'm thinking I want to do this design here. I'm going to go with today. Next, and I guess you'll see, I love iridescent paints. They give such a pretty shimmer. This is PBO Iridescent Blue Green. And I showed you, I do the consistency test. On my Dutch pours, I, I like to use 7 to 10 colors. And next is the Artist Loft Metallic Cobalt. The metallic paints and their dust paints make pretty cells. Along with pretty colors. And I just love the way blue looks on gray. And this is PBO Iridescent Blue Black. This color here is absolutely beautiful. These are my go-to blues when I do. I mean, I've got a lot of different blues I use. And don't be afraid to use paint. I've given a few lessons and I've found that that's people's biggest problem. They're afraid to put the base, enough base. Now don't get me wrong, if you pour a gallon on there, it could crack. It, yeah, it could, but if you don't put enough, then your paint's not going to flow. Your design's not going to flow. And this is one of my favorite paints here. I use it a lot. It's Old Holland Iridescent Blue. Oh, look at that color. That is pretty. Now this is going to be like a three-part series. Next, I'll show you how I put the clock together. Um... Wait, no, I'll do the resin. Then I'll show you how I put the clock together. So yeah, it's gonna be three parts. This is Folk Art Metallic Ice Blue. Oh, these are some pretty colors. I use the flower hair dryer for my Dutch pours. It doesn't have a co-setting, so I don't use it on my blooms. And yes, I do do blooms. That'll be another video. Hopefully, uh, quite a few videos. Arteza's Pearl Turquoise. And then I like to use, as my last color, I always use Golden's Iridescent Pearl or PBO's Iridescent Silver. And today, I've chosen the silver. PBO's Iridescent Silver.
used to when I first started painting, I thought that if you use all metallics or all iridescent paints that you wouldn't get a pretty painting, but I was wrong. Because as you can see, these are all iridescents except, or, or metallics, except for the Atelier Blue Black Indigo. Okay, so I've got more bubbles. We're going to pop bubbles. And then we're going to do our blowout. A lot of times I like to do the split base. Like I would have the gray here and here and then white right there in the middle. But I decided not to do that today. All right, here's my flower hair dryer. And we're going to blow this baby out. Here we go. No, not here we go. Extension cord had gotten unplugged. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going to start at the bottom and, and just go up. And it's on low. Sorry, y'all. I was supposed to put one here. Give me just a minute. Just metallic cobalt. TVO iridescent blue black. Old Holland iridescent blue. Um, folk art, metallic ice blue, Artezas, pearl turquoise, and of course my silver, iridescent silver. Get rid of the bubbles. I thought something was missing when I did that design. All right, here we go. them blues. Hey Deb, I know you're gonna love it. That's my girl. That's my blues girl. She loves them blues. Also, this is a mini blower. And I'm telling you, you don't want to go and get the one with the batteries. I did that. It didn't even move the paint. So I had to go and order this one. And it's electric. Now it doesn't come with these um, 
add-ons here, these little pieces. And I got them at Tracy Reed Designs YouTube. Go to her channel and you can order these. I'll put that in my description too. But what I like to do is just go and touch up with this. Any places. Also, there's this um, YouTube artist, Tina's Inspired Art. She does this botanical Dutch pour. It's where you go and you draw lines in it to make it look like a leaf. But um, I'm debating whether I'm going to do that today. I always debate. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But you know what? I think I'm just going to leave this one alone. I do have some places here where the color... There we go. And also, um, when it dries, you can go in and embellish it. Like right here, there's a lot of gray. What I'll do when it dries, I'll get me a paintbrush and I'll just blend in some some of these blues that I have over here and um, add some color to it. Um, did you you want to go around and scrape your drips? Oh, also, you know what? We got to see if this whole thing work. Here we go. I'm removing the first one. <laughs> hey y'all, I think it worked. You just gotta be very easy. And then your paint, you wanna, that last one, you wanna pull it real gentle. You don't want paint splattering. Right there at the end. Right here. And then my hands are getting full of paint. You know what? I got an apron on though. I do do a lot of big clocks that don't have these dashes. And I had almost forgot that they were there. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around so I can get to the other side. And I'm glad I went and give a head start because that contact paper, it sticks good. I needed something to be able to grab hold to under here. Try not to touch the edges where the blue is. Because I don't want to mess the design up on the sides. I'm just touching where the gray is. Because I can add more gray. That one didn't come all the way off. There we go. One more to go. Don't you look at that? <laughs> it worked. Wait, right, no, I got one more here. No, I got it. Okay, and then you want to go through very gently. 
were very steady handed because you don't, and then you want to wipe it off in between because you don't want to drip paint under your painting. And you want to clean these holes out because you don't want to stop it up. That's where them dashes are going to go. And just remember, wipe it off in between every time. And if you've seen this video, please tap like and subscribe. I'm new. I got a lot to learn, so be patient with me. I'm going to be doing a lot of different stuff. I do the bloom. I do straight pours and Dutch pours. The bloom, I use a spinner from Erica Hughes. Um, that'll be in my description too. And I hope y'all like this. Please subscribe. Hit that like button and subscribe. Subscribe. <coughs> Excuse me. almost done. I'm going to go around like that so I don't drag it over the painting. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Well, let me see if I can bring y'all in for a close-up. My husband hooked me up with this um, thing here that goes over my ceiling. So y'all can get a good view. Turn the flash on. I'm glad that tape worked. Yay! All right. I'll see y'all next time around. And we will finish this clock. Bye, y'all.